Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Classic MMA Revival, starring myself, Alistair, the master of gentlemen's combat, the Iron Box. I've been bumped to number 15 in the Australian featherweight rankings because other people have fought. But, you know, I'll still be number 12 always in my heart. Uh, you will notice the music has stopped on this uh, introductory montage, and I think that's because it was a piece of licensed music that YouTube has pulled, because I believe that is the source of this particular video. Anyway, today we are watching the Japan Extreme Challenged... <laughs> Japan Extreme Challenge Valet Chudo Open of 1997, or known by its... Uh, more catchy name, Jekvdo. Uh, this is an event starring quite a few guys from the school of my favorite badass old man. The first shooter to ever be in rings, in my opinion, or in my uh, experience. The man himself, master of Waijuyutsu Kezukai, Yoshinori Nishi. Uh, I actually thought that Nishi had retired after his fight against... Uh, Hicks and Gracie, but this is apparently not the case. He put this show on in 1997, or this show was put on in 1997, to showcase, I believe, guys from his Wajiyutsu Keshukai school. Uh, we have such fighters as Kaol Uno, or Karo Uno, depending on how you want to pronounce it, uh, and a lump of shit, Akira Soji, and a bunch of Dutch guys you will have never heard of. So here we are with our nice 1990s style graphics. And we are getting some uh, introduction to the event by a earnest looking Japanese man. Ah, Wajutsu Keshikai has been mentioned for the first time. And this is a uh, lump of shit. Ah, fuck, I can't remember his name. Uh, that dipshit from Pride 1, Kazunari Murakami! So uh, he's uh, introducing the event. I believe it's Kazunari Murakami. I uh, can, of course, not tell Japanese people apart, even those I have seen multiple times. As anybody who watches my Pancras reviews will know, I have repeatedly called uh, many Pancras fighters who wear different color ring gear by differing names. Uh, my biggest... Uh, screw up, repeated screw up is Osami Shibuya and Kiyuma Kunioku, who look nothing alike and wear completely different ring gear, but for some reason I cannot, for the life of me, um, give him the right name. And they're uh, introducing the rules of the event, it seems. He's talking about how Valley Chudo has uh, no rules. Of course, I can only bullshit for so long because uh, not many people on this show have uh, Wikipedia pages. And I did do some very basic research before, trying to pull up some uh, notable wins and losses. And uh, there weren't very many. Um, so it seems that uh, whoever promoted this event, brought in the Waju to Keshikai guys, and then brought over from Holland, I believe, a bunch of Dutch Kyokushin guys. Now the difference between a Dutch Kyokushin guy and a Dutch kickboxer is a Dutch Kyokushin guy may actually obey the rules, whereas a Dutch kickboxer will cheat like an absolute motherfucker, especially if they are from the Dolman's gym. Well, I'll tell you what I picked up from there. Ah, kakutogi! That's what I picked up. The one word that I really know well in Japanese, which is kakutogi, means combat sports. I did also hear some English, so we got a judo and a wrestling. Alright, we may be having our first match, or maybe we're being introduced to our uh, event hall. And once again, we hear the name of the venerable school, Waijutsu Keshikai. What that means, I have no idea. Ah, Pado Sport. So they're, um, uh, Remco Pado. So they're, um, Dutch uh, Jiu Jitsu guys, actually. 
So it shows you how much uh, research I did. <laughs> I haven't even watched this event uh, fully, so... Um, yeah, we're coming in raw. With absolutely no idea what we're talking about. And uh, not a particularly big uh, event arena here. If you're going to hold it in a small arena, you really need to black out the lights, otherwise it uh, draws attention to the fact that you have uh, not rented out a big place. Ah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you were listening, you may have heard the telltale tss of me opening up beer. And we have first our first match, Carl Uno versus Patrick Tapel. Uh, Uno had fought a couple of times in uh, Daidojuku The Wars, I believe. Before this event, I didn't actually check uh, where this event falls on his um, his uh, period. Uh, the next match we have is Martin De Jong versus Taro Obata. Uh, Taro Obata also seemingly fighting in uh, Daidojuku the Wars or whatever event this is because uh, that looks very interesting. Wonder if we can find that one. Maybe it's um some sort of. Keshikai uh, internal match. Uh, we have Jerry Kalia versus Toshinobu Komeya. This uh, this big boy, this strong boy, spelt with an I. <laughs> yeah, the more I look at his head, the more I realize this is indeed Kazunari Murakami. Please forgive me, the entire nation of Japan. Next up, we have Kenichi Ogawa versus Roy Vanderwal. And here's uh, Kenichi Ogawa punting somebody in the legs. Uh, next up we have Vidal Seradilla versus Lump of Shit Akira Soji. Uh, at this point, yet to make his debut in Pride. So no one really knew what a Lump of Shit he was. Now I'm being slightly unfair to Akira Soji. Uh, he's fought some hard guys, but uh, quite often Akira Soji fights would become quite boring. And I don't really understand why. Like um, other Keshikai guys, like Kaoluno, would uh, have exciting matches, but uh, Akira Soji and um, the Daiju Daiju Takase would have terrible matches. And here we have Yoshinori Nishi, founder of the Waijutsu Keshikai School. Super exciting to watch sometimes, uh, and uh, the first true shooter in rings. And he's fighting Max Rikadel, man without Wikipedia page. But who is, of course, a member of Pardo Sport. Uh, Remco Pardo fought in UFC 2 and uh, made an appearance in, a couple of appearances in Pancras, once beating Vernon Tiger White by repeatedly hugging him in the head and then losing against uh, Minoru Suzuki. One of Minoru Suzuki's only knockouts. He uh, got sick of just wrestling <laughs> Remco Pardo but not being able to do anything with him. So he just bitch slapped him really hard in the face and Pardo went down. Uh, seeing some nice body head combo from Kaoluno, who is always super fun to watch and actually, weirdly, quite a good uh, pro wrestler in his uh, few matches. He had a great pro wrestling match against TK Suyoshi Kosaka on the final rings event. And uh, he had that one great match at uh, Inoke Bumbaye. And uh, still fighting, um, as late as last year. Uh, I remember watching a Shuto card. He uh, won by a rear naked choke. And he's pushing 40, I believe. But uh, always looks like a baby. Unlike guys like... Um, uh, what's his damn name? The Moon Wolf. That doesn't help anybody. The guy who got that super sick... Is it Ryuta Sakurai? No. No, it is not. It might be Ryuta Sakurai. Um, Ryuta Sakurai looks really old. And here we have Pardo talking to a Dutch porn star from the looks of him. Man with heinously bad moustache. I'm looking forward to it. It's a nice match, nice game. So we'll see. It depends. I can kick, I can punch, I can do Niwaza. 
it all depends. Doesn't oh, he can do Neiwaza, it seems. He can I do uh, groundwork. Watch, uh, the game. So it's uh, the most complete fighting game from now. It's a very serious man, the old Patrick Tappels. Heinously bad rock music, uh, death metal, to uh, introduce Patrick Tappel. And he's very nice uh, striped epileted gi. I don't know if he wants to wear that in the uh, ring, because that is... Unless you can use the gi on somebody else, uh, it is just uh, handles for the other guy to hold on and punch you. I recently... Uh, I wasn't... <laughs> I went to a kudo seminar, which was supposed to have some controlled sparring, and I had two fights. <laughs> just straight up fights that day. Um, I know what sparring is, and apparently other guys don't. Um, yeah, and... Uh, I discovered against one guy how bad the gi is to have sort of pulled around on you while you're trying to strike. And then I used that on the second guy, um, who uh, did his knee later in that match. So I wonder if he's okay. I should send the uh, people a message. But here's the thing. If you are in Australia and you get the chance to go to a kudo seminar with Paul Kale, do it. Uh, even just for the aura that that human puts out. Because uh, Paul Kale murdered people for Australia. He is the most confirmed hand-to-hand -hand kills of any uh, Special Forces member of the Australian Special Forces and has strangled quite a few men in Afghanistan. Scary, scary human. And uh, I've never talked to somebody and uh, had the thought that he knows exactly... Not... I've had... Oh, he knows how to kill me. That's fine. But, I've, but talking to Paul Kale, I had... He knows how he's going to kill me and he's already thought about how he's going to do it. Uh, very different aura to any other human I've ever met. Still, cool dude, very nice, and uh, good instruction. And also, kudo is a great sport. Uh, and in, speaking of kudo, the first uh, combat sport that Yoshinori, Yoshinori Nishi uh, tried. So, uh, Patrick Tapel looking pretty lean, and Kaoluno always came in good shape. And wearing knee pads. Bad posture, lumbal lordosis from uh, Patrick Tapel. Inside low from Kaoluno. Oh, nice jab, straight into a single leg. Uh, Patrick Tapel going for the arm in guillotine. This is pre Pride Day, so that does not exist yet in the uh, grappling, <laughs> grappling uh, world. So he's just probably going to be gassing at his arms while Kaoluno sits pretty. Uh, Uno fighting the hands though. So maybe it is worrying. Uh, it seems like we have Kazunari Murakami on uh, commentary. And so we will hear him say the phrase Sodasne many times. And I, I know what that means now. It means uh, the best translation I can give you is if you know an Australian and if ever they say, yeah, nah, that is essentially what Sodasne means. Or uh, literally translated means indeed. Well, at least that's what Google Translate tells me. Kaoluno trying to work his way out of this guillotine, but he doesn't seem to be too worried by it. Uh, shoves down the elbow, and he is pop free. So we're going to see some ground and pound from Udo. Uh, double ankle sweep attempt by Patrick Tapel. And uh, an up kick, but uh, to create some space, but Uno shuts him down and immediately into a nice pass. Uno had a great ground game. Uh, high transitions, just fun to watch. Ah, oh, just like that. Look how smooth that is. Uh, straight into ground and pound, punching Patrick Tapel in the face. Uh, Patrick trying to TK scissors out the back, but uh, apparently his Neiwaza did not extend to escaping uh, Tadeshio Gatami, that is, mount. <laughs> uh, schoolboy pin from, uh, not schoolboy, uh, sort of bully pin briefly from Kaoluno, shin on the uh, arm, and he's punching. Paul Patrick Tapel directly in the noggin. And uh, Patrick Tapel briefly trying to give up his back, still getting punched in the noggin. And uh, he's obviously out of ideas because he's punching up from the bottom. Oh, giving up his back. Choke from Kaoluno. Uh, on the chin for the moment, but uh, that is tight and it is slipping on. And uh, oh, he is tapped. There we are, high pitch badass. Kaoluno, the winner in 2 minutes and 20 seconds.
チョークスリーパーで破り日本チーム最先のいいスタートを切りましたチョークスリーパー I love that、um, Japanese、uh, commentators for MMA use pro wrestling terminology So rather than calling it a、uh, What's a Renyaki choke called?、Uh, Hadeko, Hadeko no Jimmy or something? Hadeko no Jime? I think that's it But、um, so rather than calling it a rear choke without、uh, the gi, he calls it a rear choke sleeper. c a l l u n o extremely happy with himself. And、uh, c a l l u n o s cauliflower is looking young and fresh compared to his modern day ones, which are like he has two fetuses growing on the side of his head. Too bad I lost, but. I made a little mistake. I、uh, had him in a choke hole. I put a lot of、uh, pressure on the neck and on the throat. He had it,、uh, it was tough for him, but he, he managed to get out. And then he was punching. So you got to do something. And I reacted. I made a little mistake. Then he put a choke hole on me. It's、uh, only one can win. I made a little mistake and he reacted. The game. Patrick Tappel seems to have taken it quite well, but never fought in MMA again. k a o l Uno went on to have one hell of a career.、Uh, we have our next match Taro Obata versus Martin De Jong. And、uh, Martin is spelt with a J, so maybe it's Majin. Or Majin? Or Masin? Who fucking knows? Because I'm not Dutch. And、uh, my Dutch accent immediately turns into South African. And、uh, that's not how Dutch people sound. Taro o b a t a does not look like he's in the greatest of shape, but maybe it's just the、uh, white t shirt that just makes him look like a hunk of shit at the moment. <laughs> Still, great thing about Dutch guys being on a card is that they all speak English, so at least you can listen to one half of the、uh, interviews.、Uh, here he is, Martin de Jong, with that big Dutch chin. <laughs> Looks like a space marine,、uh, like a neophyte space marine.、Um, if anybody plays 40k, I'm fairly sure. Nobody, I, I think the crossover between people who. Watch Pride Resurrection,、uh, we watch my videos on Pride Resurrection and play Warhammer 40k is extremely low. But、uh, yeah, looks like a Space Marine Scout. If anybody knows what that is,、uh, a lot of Dutch guys, just、uh, very pointy、uh, facial features. Uh, Japanese Bruce, Buff Bruce Buffer, it seems. I should really find out who the Pancras Ring announcer is, because he has been the same guy since the first one. And here he comes, member of Pado Sport. So, this is actually pretty cool. It's sort of a gym versus gym event. You've got the Kishikai guys versus the Pado Sport guys.、Uh, Remco Pado, probably best remembered for elbowing、um, Orlando Veit's head down through the、uh, canvas from Kizugatami. That was a pretty cool thing he did.、Uh, his fight with Vernon Tiger White in Pancras is absolutely not worth watching. And his fight against、uh, Minoru Suzuki, worth watching to see how much of a shit Minoru Suzuki can be when he's annoyed that he can't get a submission. Because、uh, Pado is、uh, big and strong and just went to turtle a lot in that fight. And、uh, it was very difficult for Suzuki to sort of get him out of that turtle.、Uh, here he is in an interesting sort of shirt cape thing. Uh, I did wear that once in、uh, a fight.、Uh, mine was white, and I've never done it again because、uh, it just looks a bit weird. Oh, great. Bodybuilding trunks from、uh, Martin de Jong. Oh, de Jong. That would make more. Martin de Jong. There we are. Looking in good shape. I should get some of those bodybuilding trunks. They are great. And Taro Bata. Yeah, not the best of shape. Bit of a dead bod. 
組みつきに行くと思うんですけど。He's joining at a Matan de Jong. We'll see how that works out for him. Oh, nice、uh, fadeaway、uh, right hand from Martin de Jong. Oh, and a really nice elevator hook sweep straight in the mount.、Uh, bridge from Tarobata into Martin de Jong's guard. But that was some、uh, slick groundwork from our Pardo Sport man. Don't hear much about Pardo Sport in the,、uh, the pantheon of great MMA teams. But you don't hear much about Dolman's Gym either. That was the other big Dutch one. Unless you're、uh, like really hardcore, then you hear about Dolman's Gym. But、uh, for your average guy, if you say, oh, he was a, Dol he was a Chris Dolman guy from Holland, they'd be like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> Mind you, some of the audiences could be like, who the fuck is that? Chris Dolman was、um, sort of the best. Recognized as the best fighter in Holland.、Um, I'm not sure. He did compete in Kyokushin, he did compete in Judo, but、uh, didn't have、uh, any mixed fights as far as I know. Competed a lot in rings and had some heinously boring、um, pro wrestling matches there. <laughs> Though he did do some cool shit like headbutting people in the chest, so that was fun.、Uh, terrible ground and pound from Wajutsu guy Taro Bata. He's just bopping Martin de Jong in the body. Were I Taro Abata, I would、uh, actually posture down, strip grips, and、uh, punch in the body in the head from there.、Uh, the way it is with、uh, Martin de Jong's、uh, long body, he can push away.、Uh, see how Martin de Jong's sort of、uh, hips and butt is on the thighs of. Taro Bata, he can sort of keep him away at a decent distance and avoid getting bopped in the face. Also, Bata is not putting very much stink on these strikes at all. Uh, one of the cornermen has shouted out, Ooh, Amba! Lightning quick from、uh, Martin de Jong.、Uh, doesn't have the elbow, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think he's the elbow straight. And his feet are crossed, so he's not going to be able to get his hip in there. Oh, he stopped it! Oh, the referee、um, stopped it due to danger for Taro Obata.、Uh, you know what? That makes sense.、Uh, I kinda, maybe. I don't think、uh, Taro was actually in that much danger. Martin de Jong was in full extension, but he didn't have the、uh, elbow. So if you see this,、um, he goes here, his hips are far apart, and、uh, he's gonna. He crosses his ankles, and I think that、um, Taro Obata turned his、um, arm over. Uh, so, what will we become of our two fighters here? Martin, 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 whatever the fuck his name is, De Jong, would go on to have a career、uh, finishing with eight and seven. He didn't have any notable wins over anybody I really know, but he did have one loss to our shredded newsletter writer, friend of the Pride Resurrection channel, Egan Inoue.、Uh, Taro Obata went zero and four. He had earlier lost on the Super Bowl. Card, and his biggest fight was against. There we go.、Uh, I'll finish that.、Uh, Taro Obata's biggest fight was against Chris Lytle on Pancras Trans 5. I won't spoil that one. But、uh, his career was 0 4.、Um, yeah, so maybe in about two or three years I'll get to Pancras, tr the trans series of Pancras, and、uh, we'll review that fight. Because、uh, Chris Lytle had quite a few good matches in Pancras.、Uh, his, ma his Valley Tudor rules match against Ikehisa Minowa is completely bonkers. And、uh, this is a big, strong boy,、uh, Kenichi Ogawa. It is a large man. I think he may have done sumo at school. Mind you, Kiyoshi Tamara did sumo at school, and that man is super lean even today. Uh, here is his、uh, opponent 195 centimeters and 110 kilograms. That is also a large human.、Uh, Jerry Kalia. Yeah, damn. Oh, <laughs> just.
<laughs> oh shit! He just <laughs> just big brothered um to, uh, uh, Toshinobu Komaya at the back. Japanese sporters are good sporters, they are sportive fighters, they are strong fighters, and we have lots of respect for Japanese fighters and sporters. That's my message. No, actually, having respect for your opponent, not something you see out of the Dutch very often. Sorry, the entire nation of Holland. Um, but yeah, stop cheating. I think that's become less of a thing. I mean, since Willy Peters, uh, Gerard Godot, Jan Lamulda, uh, Gilbert Ivel, since those guys retired, I can name like eight more heinous Dutch cheaters. Uh, not necessarily off the top of my head though. Um, since those guys retired, um, Dutch cheater. Oh, Rene Roos, there we go, there's another one. Since those guys stopped fighting, Dutch cheatery has sort of. Uh, slid down as a sort of notable thing in martial arts, but seriously god those guys were bad And I don't understand why they just all cheated so hard. Is Bronco Sikatic Dutch or was he Croatian? Whatever he cheated like a motherfucker too uh, Here he is the strongest of boys Toshinobu Koimiya Oh, and he's got uh, Murakami in his corner. So Murakami has post recorded this uh, commentary. Unless I'm being racist again, because, uh... You know, that's the thing. Mind you, that is a genuine psychological effect. You are worse at, um... Identifying... Smaller facial differentials... Uh, in people who are from another ethnicity to your own. So, if you grow up around Caucasians your entire life, you're best at differentiating between different types of Caucasian faces and noses. Um, however, if you grow up around people of African descent or Asian descent, you are better at differentiating between those facial structures. Uh, this can be accurately measured by giving, showing you faces and then showing you faces upside down and asking whether or not you can see these, you've seen these faces before. Uh, immediate strong boy cuddle, uh, underhook and overhook from our boy Roy, uh, not Roy, uh, Jerry Carlier. And, uh, view of tape in the butt crack, I believe, of, um, oh no, that's a jog strap of Toshinobu Komeya. That is not something we want to see. Jesus Christ, um, is that Yuji Shimada? Is the referee? What's he doing? He's, uh, pushing at the hands of somebody. Getting involved in, in a way he probably shouldn't be. Knees to the thighs from Jerry Kalia. But please, Yuji Shimada, pull up, um, Toshinobu Koimeya's shorts. Oh, damn! Um, Jerry Kalia is attempting to decapitate and, uh, punish the body of Toshinobu Komeya. Now, people may say that uh, being fat will protect you against body shots. Did not help Baruto against um, Krokop in Ryzen uh, a year or two ago. So, uh, I think that may be a myth. And um, Daniel Cormier, famously chubby, uh, eats body shots and does not like them. Uh, headlock throw attempt there. Would have gone directly into the ropes and would have just pulled the guy on top of him. Damn it, Jerry Kalia. Not great ring awareness. Um... Please, Yuji Shimada, pull up the sh pull up the pants. Oh, he's um, bounced him off the ropes. Nice knee to the body there by Jerry Kalia. But uh, this is an eyesore, to be honest. Did Reebok supply these? Um, to did Reebok supply Toshinobu Komaya's pants? Because uh, Reebok fight. Oh yes! Thank you, Yuji Shimada. You wonderful human. And he's trying to uh, bounce them off the ropes. Uh, Jerry Kalia briefly thinking about standing guard and the cameraman zooming in on the Wajuyutsu on Toshinobu Komoye's butt. Oh dear, I, I do not have great hopes for this fight. Based on the fact that uh, Toshinobu Komoye's total... 
uh, sum of offense is to cuddle. He may just be some sort of gigantic teddy bear. But uh, this is kind of what happens when you're bringing guys from sumo. Uh, despite the power of the 100 hand slap, uh, quite often their offense just results in uh, yeah, cuddling. Foot stomp? That's something! And uh, Jerry Carly has gotten bored to pummel for an underhook. Don't just stand there looking terribly bored. And uh, Yuji Shimada trying to force action by bouncing them out or using the ropes to bounce them out. This is, however, not working because the two uh, people... Uh, there are two men in the ring, and they weigh about four Yuji Shimadas, if that is an uh, item of measurement. That may actually not be Yuji Shimada. I could be, once again, super racist! <laughs> I just fell over! <laughs> uh, the ref, uh, pulling on the ropes, attempting to force the action, has uh, fallen over. Jerry Kalia kneeing directly in the penis and uh, the ref oh stop cheating <laughs> uh, Murakami arcing up uh, he punched him in the back of the head there uh, kneed him in the penis and then punched him in the brain mm, so to stay says Kazunari Murakami uh, they've given him time thankfully we didn't have to watch the recovery and I think they've actually fast forwarded the clock slightly oh damn nice knee uh, ooh good front kick to the liver um ref he is flinching and covering and turning away stop this match before your man dies stop <laughs> says the referee and Jerry Kalia, your winner by knee to the orbital bone, I believe. And, uh, yeah, Toshinobu Komeya does not look happy. Clonk! Yeah, if a man does that in a match, turns away after being hit. Oh, that front kick to the liver was beautiful, too. Uh, yeah, if you're a referee and you see a man do that in the match, turn away, uh, holding his face, stop the fight. Because one, he hasn't trained enough to take the damage, or two, he is hurt so badly that uh, it has overcome his training and he's not facing his opponent. Uh, so you are stopping bad damage from occurring. Uh, Toshinobu Komeya would continue to fight! Uh, he would go two wins and three losses. Uh, he would have a loss to other lump of shit, Sanei Kikuda. I'm sorry. Easily. Blows to his head to get him uh, to get him out, but uh, he's very strong, very strong, and he was prepared. And he he keeps me to uh, to his body, so he tried to get me down. And uh, I also was prepared for him because I know he's uh, he's a strong fighter. Jerry Kalia not acknowledging that his win probably came because he punted um, Komeya in the dick. Uh, still, uh, Sanei Kuda would beat um, Toshinobu Komeya at the Lumax Cup of 97, which cannot be found for love or money. Uh, Toshinobu Komeya, however, would beat uh, Hiroyuki Yoshoika, who um, did fight, who fans of the show may remember from the Lumax Cup of 1996. Or they might not. Uh, you know, who really cares? But yeah, no real names on either of their uh, records. Jerry Kalia would go one and one and then retire after his first loss. We've got some music on the background, I hope that uh, this will not result in a uh, copyright strike. Uh, my Pancras Truth 9 review, mega review, super long. Uh, there are two uh, pieces of extreme and unsettling silence at the walkout of Keiichiro Yamamiya and Jason Delucia because, uh, well, Keiichiro's uh, walkout resulted in my video not being viewable by the entire nation of Japan. And uh, given that it is Pancras, some of my viewership actually does come from there. So I thought I'd, holy fuck, look at that cauliflower ear. Um, I thought I would uh, actually try and maintain that viewership. Whereas, um, and uh, 
The copyright claim is of Jason Delucia's walkout song would place ads on the whole video, so I decided, Jesus Christ! It is a fetus growing off the side of Kenichi Ogawa's head. I think he might have wrestled at school. Um, Christ, you should drain that thing, fuck. I'd get it amputated or something. Good lord, well, it shows he's a tough guy, or at least a, a fucking idiot. Um, and uh, shoots uh, with his left foot forward. Um, good lord. I cannot focus at all because I've seen that thing that is growing out of uh, Kenichi Ogawa's head. Uh, and his uh, opponent, uh, Roy Vanderwal. Or Vanderwal. Uh, 185 centimeters and 90 kilos, so in good shape. I'm just videotaping him strutting around. Ooh. It's great being here in Japan. In Japan. <laughs> um, <laughs> man of very few words, Roy Vanderwal. That is not how to get fans. Um actually, you know, talk like a human being. Oh, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu shirt. Um, Remco Pardo, uh, after losing to Hoist, I believe he would become slightly more involved in uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, sort of accepting its uh, power as better than Dutch Jiu-Jitsu. But uh, I don't know how far he went with it. Mind you, based on the uh, armbar from Martin de Jong, he went far enough. Because uh, watching Remco Pardo's uh, fights in uh, in the UFC, he knows four moves. <laughs> oh, damn. Shredded is a Roy Vanderwaal. And uh, Keiichi Ogawa coming out to some sick dance tunes. And apparently the... Uh, the shiny black cape shirt thing is a is a Wajuyutsu Keshikai um, staple. As well as the interesting t-shirts. Oh, don't fight in a t-shirt, Kenichi Ogawa. You're better than that. Yeah, Roy Van der Waal, or Roy Van der Waal, looking in great shape. And uh, Kenichi Ogawa, oh, abrupt uh, noise change there. Um, Kenichi Ogawa, I think his uh, one advantage coming into this fight is that he is actually two people. Uh, one, Kenichi Ogawa, and two, the uh, twin he absorbed in the womb that is now growing out of the side of his head. Nice pink shorts, though. Charges into the clinch. Uh, yep, he's a wrestler. <laughs> Mind you, better entry than some people. Actually shelling up, catching the punch, and then charging in. So we'll see what he does. And we haven't seen the second round in a fight yet. Uh, knees to the inside of the thigh and the body by Roy Van Der Waal. And that we did some some, some Dutch cheating from Jerry Kalia. So uh, whether or not we see some from, from Roy, uh, yet to be seen. I think it just need him in the junk there. Maybe it was the body. Who knows? Only the two in the ring. No, that one looked like the body. So uh, seems he's picking his targets well. Corner of his jog strap falling out of his shorts. A standing guillotine attempt. Uh, attempted foot sweep by Kenichi Ogawa. Little does he know that the only way to get out of a guillotine is by Northern Light Suplex. Or a uh, scoop slam. <laughs> Either or work. Knees to the thighs from Kenichi Ogawa. He's worked out that these knee things are pretty cool. Another knee to the inside thigh. Uh, 
Mm. There's 40 minutes to go in this show, and there are two matches left after this one. Hmm, maybe we might have a pair of stinkers on our hands. <laughs> Given that one of them has a Kurosoji in it, that wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Mind you, this hasn't been partic This hasn't been a mile a minute action either. Yep, just knees in the clinch. Uh, unfortunately, this being Valet Chudo rules, there will be no referee breaks to uh, ensure that interesting shit actually happens. Uh, the Gracies would, of course, complain if there were any breaks, but god damn, make matches exciting. Uh, people actually watch this shit, you know. Very simply, I think that if the UFC is stuck with like the one round 30 minute rule, uh, it would not survive as a sport. Because very simply, if you give people half an hour, they'll do nothing. If you give people three, five minutes, they'll do shit. Because they've only got five minutes at a time to sort of cement a win. Terrible example of that. Um, Ken Shamrock versus Hoist Gracie 2. Uh, for the final three minutes, Ken Shamrock beat the snot out of Hoist Gracie. Just clobbered the shit out of him from inside of his guard. But for half an hour before that, he just sat there, T-Rexing and defending. It was terrible. Mind you, not as much of a farce as Ken Shamrock versus Hoist 3. One, why did Texas make that match? Two, why did the match, why did the stoppage of that match come off a blatant dick shot? Three, why did Ken Shamrock test positive for steroids immediately afterwards? God damn it, Ken, I love you. But you can't be doing that. I will one day make a video called The uh, Curious Case of Ken Shamrock and uh, I'm going to have a talk about him because he's a great character, he's a great fighter. When he was on, prior to his um, WWE run, he was just one of the most terrifying humans in all the world. And uh, just, there's a lot of conjecture, but just some things happened and Ken was never really the same. And I think that the world should have treated Ken Shamrock better. And I think Ken Shamrock should have treated Ken Shamrock better. And holy fuck, this fight has not been particularly exciting. Just, uh Valet Tudor rules, everybody. This is why you don't have... I think they've got the rings, uh, time guy. Looking at the sick pump on the arm of Roy Van der Waal. So, I don't know. If you're into bodybuilding, maybe there's something in this uh, match for you. But otherwise, yeah, nothing great. Also, Roy Van der Waal looks like a fucking... Um, uh, need it. Both guys junk. Uh, Roy Van der Waal also looks like a fucking space marine. So, something about being Dutch means you, that you have a... Just incredibly square face. Like, I'm having trouble thinking of a Dutch guy who isn't fat, who has, like, weak uh, facial features. Oh, here we are, the one highlight, this entry into the clinch. And then uh, these knees. God, that was a terrible round. Oh, fuck, we're back here again. Oh, yes! Well done, Roy! He turned him onto the corner. Nice triple up to the body and a good knee as well. Um, oh, good punches to the body as well. Uh, attempted headlock, attempted... Um, oh, oh, sort of Gary, I think, from uh, Roy Van der Waal. Pair of flailing low kicks from uh, Kenichi Ogawa. Punch him in the ear. Oh, hard low kick from Roy Van der Waal. Yes! Yes, boys! This is how to actually fight. Uh, triple jabs. Uh, Roy Van der Waal has discovered that if you punch Kenichi Ogawa, he does nothing about it. Um, Kenichi Ogawa threw a Hail Mary overhead. Holy fuck! What an uppercut! 
Uh, uh, and uh, front naked choke, and he punts his uh, mouth guard into the audience. That was a nice uh, finish by Roy Van Der Waal. Uh, good jabs, and then the sick uppercut. Uh, oh, just absolutely buckles Kenichi Ogawa. I would have stopped the match right there. Still, uh, Kenichi Ogawa, smart man, submits to the moment he's caught in something resembling a submission. Oh, just stop turning to your right, Kenichi Ogawa. Stop letting me see this horrendous growth that is your ear. Oh, now they've zoomed in on it. It has a face. It legit has eyes and a mouth hole. Um, Kenichi Ogawa would go and, uh... <laughs> okay, Kenichi Ogawa's symbiotic twin would overtake his brain, and he would never fight in MMA again. Uh, Roy Van Der Waal, also 1-0, would, uh, disappear into the ether after this fight. Yeah, shitty mic skills from Roy Van Der Waal. Alright, uh, semi-final match. Another square-faced Dutchman, uh, Vidal Serradia. Maybe it's Vidal, who fucking knows? Uh, fighting a lump of shit with porno stash Akira Soji. Uh, actually in decent shape. Uh, oh, and surprising flexibility from... Yeah, early in the Pride days, Akira Soji looked okay, but then he just got into... Yeah. Enjoyed his pies too much. What is this event? I actually... I'm gonna try and search this particular event out on YouTube. 1996, November 30th. Oh, nice knee from front headlock by uh, Kurosoji there. Nobody, however, watching it. It appears to be some sort of Keshikai event. Uh, God-awful facial hair from uh, Akira Soji. Uh, looking young and uh, in relatively good shape. And of course, known well to our Pride Resurrection fans. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Pride himself. When did he retire? Because I know Shungo Yama went for ages, pan retired like Pancras 262. But uh, I can't remember when uh, Akira Soji retired. But he fought on like every Pride event, which is crazy. Mind you, given the fights he had on every Pride event, it's a little bit more understandable because they were like 20 minute cuddling matches. They seem to be interviewing him for a fair while. I believe that was thank you for watching me. And uh, another person with cheekbones you could cut diamond on, Vidal Serradia. And uh, this is obviously um, footage from earlier that night. So this is uh, obviously a post recording. Once again, another damn space marine. Fucking Dutch guys. He's got a big nose, which is slightly bent to the left. And uh, here comes Vidal with a white belt, but uh, nice um, epaulets, same as Patrick Tapel was wearing earlier in the match. So I think they're a Pardo Sport uh, trademark. Mind you, the logo is pretty cool, that uh, bull in the gi. Not that I would describe uh, Remco Padel's uh, fight style as uh, bull-like. I would describe it more like a panda bear. Because panda bears could probably fuck you up, but they do it real slowly. Uh, 
Oh, and they cling to you. Um, have you ever you've seen baby panda bears? Um, Kira Soji coming out to the ring wearing his Waijutsu Keshikai gi, but I believe he's judo black belt. I said a brown belt. I got no idea. This uh, video color corrected in a weird way, probably because it's from a VHS tape that has been copied time after time after time. Uh, skinny fat is uh, Vidal Saridia. Ooh, kickboxer. And uh, I take back what I said about Akira Soji being in shape. <laughs> um, okay, uh, this is a particularly Australian reference, but in every sort of university rugby team, there is a man who's played there for time immemorial, and he started out on the wing, and then uh, slowly over his career got fatter and fatter and fatter, and so he went wing, centres, started playing in the forwards, and now he is the uh, hooker of the... Uh, <laughs> of the scrum and uh, that is Akira Soji's body type fat 40 year old uh, Australian rugby player still can fight if it is somewhat boring alright round one fight uh, this should be interesting seeing if Vidal can keep him at the range Mm, snapping inside low kick, but a charging double leg by Akira Soji. Uh, they seem to have learned the guillotine choke from Remco Pado, but I don't know what else they learned. Uh, top half guard from Akira Soji, posting on the leg to uh, pass. Vidal seems to be content to attempt to guillotine Soji from here. Not a smart idea. At the time of recording my most, re most recent win, I briefly had front headlock from bottom half guard and I immediately re-guarded because I'm like, I'm going to get Von Fluid if I don't get guard back immediately. I did manage to finish that guillotine, uh, <laughs> which I was quite happy about. Uh, interesting half guard here from Vidal Saradia, trying to push Soji's uh, knee, post on Soji's knee, push him back and then re-guard. But he seems content to hold half guard. Shoji landing some yeah, solidish body punches. But uh, they don't seem to be bothering Vidal so much. Uh, wrist control from Vidal. And uh, he just broke his own grip um, by getting his knee involved there. Uh, Shoji posting on the hip, trying to pass. Intermount. Vidal's got a grip on his head. So just punch him in the body, Shoji. There you go. And then uh, hammer fists in the face. Or oh, slide up into a high mount so he can't hold onto your head anymore. Uh, still low mount from Akira Soji. Alright, postures. Face punches. Uh, Vidal going head to dick in order to avoid damage. Shoji doing the right thing, shoving away in the face. Ooh, nice right hand there. A uh, couple of nice punches there. So yeah, if ever you're uh, in on top, push the face. Hard hammer fists here from Soji. Oh, and he's tapping. He's tapped there. R stop, says the referee. <laughs> Rassles Soji off. And Soji too excited. By half. And Murakami runs in to slap him on the arms. Murakami is actually quite a big human. Uh, no wonder he went to pro wrestling. But yeah, immediately after passing, Soji went straight into uh, hard punches. Bonk! Bonk! Uh, Donkey Kong punches from Akira Soji. And uh, referee, whoever, it might be Yuji Shimada, got right in there in order to get him off. Ooh. This is still recording, apparently. Um, my recording will automatically stop after an hour, so in fact, I'm going to take a little break here, ladies and gentlemen.
And we're back. Still in a Kurosoji's uh, interview. But <laughs> because everybody's talking about this tournament, I, I'm making me nervous and don't expect uh, what or how. And that's why I'm, I clapped. Because everybody was talking about this big tournament and it was nothing. No, oh, he got nervous. He got uh, psyched out uh, before the match did Vidal Serdia. Akira Soji went on to fight a lot in Pride, and uh, Vidal Serdia would go 5-5 five and five in his MMA career against people I have never heard of uh, who also don't have Wikipedia pages. So now we're uh, back on the Kazunari Murakami show. I'm trying to remember whether Murakami had started pro wrestling at this point. I don't think he had. I think after his um, uh, in inverted commas win against John Dixon at uh, Pride 1, he went into pro wrestling. Uh, then he would clobber Bart Vale um, at Extreme Fighting 3. Uh, I am waiting for... I am waiting for that match because... Uh, I don't know why I don't like Bart Vale. I'm not sure why it is, but I don't. And so watching him lose uh, always uh, always puts a smile on my face. I think I don't like Bart Vale because he claims to be what guys like Ken Shamrock and Funaki are. And I've seen his instructionals and there's some good stuff. That at the time you would have thought, oh, that's bullshit, that, you, that you'll, that'll never happen. And then because grappling is sort of rotated around where a bunch of like old cash wrestling stuff is now showing up uh, in modern day grappling, now uh, you see a lot of the stuff that's on Bart Vale's tapes. Um, but I don't know, he looked like. I feel like Bart Vale is a guy who went way too hard in sparring and then never fought, like a gym destroyer. Well, he did fight uh, four times or three times because he had that one win at uh, World Combat Championships and then a loss at Extreme Fighting 3 and then he got molested by Dan Seven. And I'm not sure if there are any other matches. <laughs> also, I don't like Bart Vale because he looks like an American, like, McDojo <laughs> Bart Vale is like McDojo guy, McDojo guy taken to the absolute extreme. So obviously I was paying no attention to what these two guys were saying because I've gone on my aimless diatribe about Bart Vale. Of course I'm trying to remember that that did come from Kazunari Murakami uh, clobbering him once. Come on fellas, let's get on to the main event, which is Yoshinori Nishi, my favorite badass old guy. Uh, ancient human being. Uh, if you look at hieroglyphs, you will see pictures of Ric Flair wrestling Anubis and that Yoshinori Nishi shooting against Horus. Here he is. Look at this old man. I'm not sure if uh, Yoshinori Nishi is sort of that... Um, the Yoshiaki Fujiwara brand of old man, who was just immediately old the moment he came out of the womb. Because I haven't seen enough of him. But I've seen, um... I've seen 30 years of uh, Yoshiaki Fujiwara's wrestling career. And Fujiwara looks older now than he did back then, but he looks old, like, in the first UWF. I think he was in the first UWF. I know he was in UWF 2.0. Maybe I'm bullshitting, who knows. Ah, here we are, the strongest of boys, wiping his head down. And uh, Yoshinori Nishi being relaxed and getting a calf rub. Reading the uh, the flyer for the match. That is something that Japanese promotions do that uh, American ones and Australian ones don't do. They produce great match flyers with awesome photography. Yeah. 
Nishi, quite a good uh, shoot style guy as well. And uh, here he is, thinking about all his students winning and losing. Oh, he's saying uh, chin up to Ogawa. Maybe he's talking to Ogawa's parasitic twin. He's talking about Nawaza, so groundwork. They seem to be really keen on interviewing uh, Yoshino Nishi, which does make sense because he is uh, Wajiju Tsukeshikai's guy. But he wouldn't go on to be the most famous guy. I think that probably goes to. Um, Fuck! I finally remember his goddamn name. Ruben Asato, the Moon Wolf, looks fucking old and has looked old for ages. Whereas Carl Uno uh, still looks young, even though being forty something and having his knees held together by spit and band aids. But yeah, fuck. Um, I don't think that. Uh, ooh. Uh, we found a Dutchman with a weak chin. Um, here he is, Max Reichdahl. Trying for an Ogoshi there. Sort of slow motion judo throw. And he's uh, unironically wearing long gi pants. And he looks like the bad guy from the Smurfs. Which wouldn't make sense because the Smurfs were like Dutch or Slavic. <laughs> Whatever, they're European. And I'd like to fight it. And I have a great respect for Mr. Nishi for what he's doing. All right, here we are, the final. And here comes Max Reich, though. Bows to all corners of the ring. Looks like a Kyokushin guy to me. And uh, this was not this whole match, but like little bits of it. I sort of flicked onto when I was finding this video I flicked this match to work out that this was the right event and so I saw that bow and the fact that he wears gi pants to fight and so I immediately thought that they were Kyokushin guys I was obviously very fucking wrong and uh, here's Yoshinori Nishi in a gi top and uh Valetuno shorts And uh, he got old uh, between 1992 and now. Uh, 1992 Nishi's body looked like like the sickest old man strength, whereas now he looks just kind of old. And just like yeah, Yuki Kondo. Uh, Yuki Kondo in 2015 like still looked like a world world killer in Pancras, and then just so stiff now. And uh, he's soon to fight uh, Henzo Gracie, and I don't know how I feel about that fight. Also, I think the lighting in rings was better. <laughs> oh, Enzo's here! And he's gonna give some flowers out. That's cool. Good on you, Enzo. I wonder how much they paid him to hand out flowers. Oh, maybe he was just in Japan. I think Enzo would understand who Nishi was. And, uh, rocking the bum bag is Henzo Gracie, the fanny pack, uh, bringing it back. Yeah, Henzo, always said to be the nicest of the Gracies, but was a wild man in his youth. Uh, Alright, here we go. Keshukai versus Kyokushin and... Uh, Nice leaping hook by Nishi there. Double leg from uh, Max Reichdahl. He decided he no longer wants to fuck with uh, Nishi on the feet. And Nishi, quite good striking. 
敗勝負してますけど、ええ、この選手はタックルに行ってますね。はい。どちらかというと日本のタックルが強いですから。<笑>ね、Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Middle of winter out here in Australia, and、uh, it was minus five this morning. That's、uh, Celsius. So that's、uh, quite cold. And、um, so, yeah,、uh, after recording for a solid hour and、uh, four minutes and 33 seconds, got a little tickle in my throat. No, I can, of course, talk about this because nothing is happening. Double O hooks from Nishi, and、uh, briefly foot on hip, but、uh, nothing much going on. The、uh, corner man of Nishi has shouted four minutes to go. Still nothing going on. So I'll,、uh, I'll give you a sneak peek into the future. Coming soon to Pride Resurrection is、uh, Australian Caged Combat 1 Classic MMA Revival,、uh, which will come with, hopefully, fingers crossed. An interview from the King of Rock and Rumble himself, Elvis Sinisic. And、uh, if I can work out how to contact him, maybe Christopher Hazeman.、Uh, I'm going to give that a go over the next couple of days. I might actually have to work, to, work out what LinkedIn is because that's the only、uh, like, social media I could find him on the internet.、Uh, whereas, because Elvis Sinisic is sort of still heavily involved in the UFC and、uh, fight promotion in Australia, he、uh, actually has something of a social media presence. Loves his、uh, multicolored geese, does Elvis Sinisic. Wears a、uh, Sikh red jujitsu gi.、Uh, so, looks kind of McDojo ish, but、uh, if you're learning from Sinisic, you are learning legit shit.、Uh, trying to kick up for a triangle is Yoshinori Nishi, and Max Reichdale has gotten one of his arms free and is punching to the body.、Uh, Nishi thinking Kimura also as well. Double wrist lock, if it's、uh, Yoshinori Nishi, it would be a double wrist lock. Because he learned submissions from Yoshiaki Fujiwara, the other badass old man of Japanese shoot fighting fame. Mind you, again, I don't know if Fujiwara actually had any shoots, but I know he probably beat the shit out of everybody in the gym. Because、uh, there is a respect for Fujiwara that there doesn't sort of exist by,、uh, in any, for anybody else, and he can still cause so much pain at the age of 70 whatever. Body punches from Max Rakdale, but still not much happening at all. Oh, body body head from. Booty booty head from Max Rakdale.、Uh, trying to use a cross face to force Nishi down. Nishi content to hold on to this underhook, and he's trying to、uh, cross grip the wrist of、uh, Max Reichdahl, but he's going to lose that overhook if he tries that. He's just getting punched in the body, just getting meat tenderized. So, money in the bank from Reichdahl, but.、Uh, the unfortunate thing is,、uh, in all of his rings matches, Nishi was never in guard. And so we never saw the guard of Nishi. So the、uh, unorthodox submission game of Nishi, quite exciting, the orthodox submission game, apparently boring as sin. So 30 seconds left.、Uh, Henso Gracie watching intently, surprisingly. Mind you, if there's a person who can find somebody on the bottom getting punished in guard, exciting, it is the Gracies, given that that is their、uh, main fighting style. Not Henzo, of course. Henzo actually fought people rather than cuddled and、uh, waited until they got tired. Looking uncomfortable was Yoshinori Nishi there. And、uh, tired. Get some ice on that ribcage.、So、yeah, nice、uh, double leg by Max Rakdal. 
Unfortunately, he followed straight through, so he ended up in guard rather than passing to side control. And you know what? I reckon Nishi would have actually done a better grappling from the bottom of side control than he did in guard. Not enough MMA rounds, I think, uh, for Yoshinori Nishi. Oh, hard strikes! He's giving it a go to start with. Uh, attempted arm. No, it wasn't even a guillotine. He looks in some sort of pain there. Maybe he's got a rib broken. Double overhooks from Nishi. I, I sense how this round's going to go.西の方は有利な展開にしていくためにはえっととりあえずこの自分がしたっていう位置を上にしなくちゃいけないんですよねはいそれなんで相手を返さなくちゃいけないんで。やはり西選手としてはどちらかというとマウント保持の方が得意な
He's a Gary from Willy Peters. Because Peters is a cheating fuck. Oh my god, this is terrible. This completely inactive guard from Yoshinori Nishi. I think that comes from his, uh... I'm gonna say it's the Kudo. Because Kudo has a very limited ground fighting time. Look at him fucking go for those strikes and then just immediately get double legged. Like, not even a good double leg. That one was shitty. And he tried to flail up from his back there and just got bopped in the nose for his trouble. Mm. Alright, third and final round. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Double leg from Rakdal. And uh, Nishi's gone to the same guard because that was reducing the damage he was taking. Because uh, Rakdal can't get the same amount of hit and strike. Yes, Rakdal! Yes, Rakdal! That's better! Thank you! And the crowd likes it too. But if he shoots for another double leg, I'm going to be really disappointed in him. Nice one too from Nishi! Oh, fuck you, Rakdal! Uh, Rakdal <laughs> double legs again. Uh, I'm in guillotine attempt from Nishi. Nishi couldn't stop a takedown to save his life, it seems. And yeah, he got belly to belly suplex by, um... Did he get suplex by... I can't remember if he got suplexed by Willie Peters. Ragdoll shaking his head at Nishi going, no, nah, no, nah, strikes from the bottom don't hurt, brah. Ah, going harder for the strikes here. Ragdoll actually committing to the ground and pan a little bit here, trying to stand a pass. Oh, he's left his arm out there, though. Uh, Nishi's kicked his legs up. This is a lot better. Oh, armbar. That is a nice armbar from Yoshino and Nishi. And Ragdoll has tapped. And the third round was actually fun! <laughs> Alright, two rounds of heinous shit, and then uh, the moment Reichdahl sort of tries to hurt Nishi, Nishi gets the finish. So that uh, shows you what annoys me about boring fights. When people take risks, shit happens. Look at those one, two, nice. Uh, right on the chin, I think, from Nishi. Couldn't tell from the angle. Reichdahl ducks into the double. Uh, Nishi pulls a arm in guillotine, but Reichdahl pulls his head free. And then he uh, kicks up. This is a really nice armbar. He feeds himself all the way across and traps the other arm in too. That is really nice. He's actually triangled the other arm into the equation. Domo says uh, Yoshinori Nishi. So thank you. I do have a Yoshinori instructional tape that I have yet to watch. So uh, I'll try and watch that thing and I'll, I'll report back on my next uh, Classic MMA revival on how it is. He seems uh, out of breath, which is understandable because he did get punched in the body a lot. Yeah, I've got no idea what to say. <laughs> he hasn't said the word kaktogi. Or so does ne. Or jujujikitami. Which is about all I've got. I mean, I understand why the fight was boring. It just annoys me that it was, because Reichdahl was in risk-averse mode, and Nishi was in risk-averse mode. Like, Nishi was trying to minimize damage rather than attack from his back, and that Reichdahl was trying to minimize risk rather than attack from top and so it just sort of resulted in a stalemate whereas when both guys actually went oh we can attack and do shit now 
you know, fun stuff happened. Mm. But yeah, that's why you need rounds, because there's... Every time there's a fresh start, it, re, it sort of half resets the... Uh, I think he, he fight very good. And he was in, in, uh, in a good position. I found he became a little bit tired. But he waited to his chance and then he grabbed it. He had one chance and he took it. So it's a little bit... Philosophical tired. is our next right though. I think if I wait for the fourth round, perhaps he was too tired to do anything. That was my tactic, but... Okay, it didn't work. Uh, Ragdale admits to being a boring shit and uh, waiting for Yoshino Nishi to tire himself out. The only man who's had an exciting fight while doing that is uh, Frank Shamrock, I believe, against Tito Ortiz. This is a great fight, and uh, if you can find it, watch it. It's a very good defensive jiu-jitsu from Frank Shamrock and uh, wrestling defense. Uh, even though Frank Shamrock was kind of bad at stopping takedowns, he uh, stopped quite a few in that match. And um, good sort of defending passing, because he noticed that uh, Tito Ortiz didn't pass, the only ever passed the one way. So he just defended all passes from that direction, and it just, you know, worked out for him fairly well. And then he hammer fisted him in the side of the head. It's just a great match, and you should go watch. Unlike this one, which was heinously bad. Still, um, alright event. Uh, what would happen to Max Reichdahl? Uh He was brought into job, it seems. He would go 0 and 1 and then disappear. Uh, Yoshinori Nishi, after getting a win and putting his uh, MMA career at 4 and 3, uh, would ride off into the sunset. Oh, and Kazunori Murakami's talking about his upcoming match against John Dixon in um, Pride 1. Very interesting. And there is John Dixon flatlining another human being. Uh, I wonder how that match would turn out. Hint, hint, it was very dodgy. Uh, still, I hope you enjoyed listening to this, ladies and gentlemen. I enjoyed the most part of it. Our uh, fight of the night goes to Kaluno versus Patrick Tapel. I just really liked it. And uh, I will see you all next time. <laughs> 番組内でご紹介しました村上選手のサインと T シャツのプレゼントの宛先はご覧の通りです。